Hey people, how are you doing? I wanted to share with you today something that I maybe haven't um, disclosed before. I am cooking some healthy food. That's not too big of a deal in and of itself right there. Trying out um, some beets. I've never just boiled up beets before. Bought those at Sprouts. We'll see how that turns out. I've got uh, some red bell peppers, some onions, some yellow squash, and I'll throw spinach in there. A little coconut oil on that one. And then I've got some uh, yellow squash, some broccoli, and snow peas. And this one just steaming up. And I had to splurge a little bit and get me some pickled garlic there. Yum. And some olives. I always like their olives. Well, what I wanted to share with you is that I started a few months ago, around uh, end of February or so, trying to figure out how to get inflammation down. Ever since my little scuffle with cancer, I've had this issue of inflammation. It came about really strong in September of 2009. Um, there was a four-day period where it just set in and I basically locked down, couldn't bend over and tie my shoes, untie them and that kind of thing. And uh, my cancer moves real fast, the kind I had Burkitt's lymphoma, and I was told if it came back, there wasn't a whole lot they thought they could do. They said they would try to get a bone marrow transplant. Uh, we had looked for a year and a half for a, a uh, donor, and there really hadn't been one. So I didn't have a whole lot of hopes for a batch at that point, and I thought my cancer was back. It was basically the same symptoms I had when uh, my cancer first set in. Since September 2009, I've been on medication to deal with the arthritis, and the doses have uh, steadily been getting stronger and more frequently. Uh, somebody up at work shared with me about an a anti-inflammatory diet that they were trying because uh, this is a younger gal who had been in great shape and had had uh, a surgery on her neck, and, and she just couldn't get beyond the pain, and it was too far out. And the doctor tried, uh, suggested an anti-inflammatory diet to help reduce inflammation, and it made a difference in her. She was able to wean down on her medicines considerably, and that really spoke volumes to me. Um, so I started on this hunt to learn about anti-inflammatory foods and that kind of thing. And long story short, I wound up um, becoming kind of a believer that what you put in your body can make a difference. And I think we know that on one level, but... How precise can food we put in make an exact effect on the body it became kind of a, a, a hunt of mine. So what I ended up doing was getting a book called Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman. And basically, it is a book that makes a case for being a vegetarian. Uh, you know, I can't say I've really had a big desire to be a vegetarian. But, you know, I say that as I'm cooking all these vegetables, but... Yeah, I won't bother to disclose that I've been sitting here having a little fun with some pork tenderloin and I also grilled up some chicken, so I've been enjoying that too. But uh, basically it makes a case for it. And he says, if you're not willing to be a, a vegetarian, why don't you be a flexitarian? Minimize your meats, minimize your animal products. Milk is not good for you. Uh, you know, a cup here and there, not a big deal. But uh, he makes a case and he does it through scientific data and the studies and it's quite compelling for... Um, animal-based proteins are not that healthy and that there's some serious misconceptions. There, there's actually so many that it's hard to even consider what all I could cover in a, a video like this. But, you know, one of the big misconceptions is, is well, you got to have animal-based proteins to, you know, meats to get your protein. And did you know that 100 calories of broccoli has like 11.1 .1 grams of protein, whereas 100 calories of steak only has something like 6.9 uh, grams of protein. So when you when you make a comparison like that, it's easy to see why you know, giraffes, rhinoceros, you know, your big animals, elephants, can eat a plant-based diet and they grow massive, powerful muscles. Now, if they're growing muscles of this kind, it kind of begs the question then, do we have to have the protein? You know, do, can we eat more fruits and vegetables? That's kind of the idea. Is could we eat more fruits and vegetables? And the ultimate answer is yes. Um, I've been working on this for, well, let's see, it is now May 14th or 15th, and been working on this for, ever since I guess around March 1, that's when I really got energetic on this. <clears throat> I 
I can't say that I've applied myself, uh, you know, to the extent that they recommend in the book. And I certainly am not a purist on this. Uh, I have had a bucket of candy. Yeah, I've kind of gotten some candy the last couple of days. Um, mm -hmm. So while I have certainly not been a purist to the diet and I have not followed their recommendations exactly, the basic knowledge really impressed me. Um, I got real convinced that there was something to this, that, you know, I, I want to correct my triglycerides, which run way high, and uh, they run typically over 900. Yeah, not real proud of that. Um, cholesterol runs real high, and uh, they claim that a lot of this can be corrected or at least improved through this diet, and so I'm going for it. I maybe haven't been a purist at it, and I've been having some fun with certain amounts of foods, but I would say I'm eating at least 80% now of fresh items, you know, and I've got a lot of good fresh spinach here I'm going to put in, and blah, blah. So, I will be letting y'all know whether my lab values get better or not, and I will be honest with you and see if it works. Um, I was at work. I hadn't told a person what I was doing. I was mostly just pursuing it on my own. And during change of shift, uh, one of the other RNs, just kind of out of the blue, she works on the day shift, said to me, Robert, I thought about you the other day watching a documentary. And I said, so what did you think about me? And she goes, well, I thought about you and cancer and food. Okay, I found that really, really interesting in the timing of that, considering I hadn't told anyone a thing. Um, she watched a documentary called Forks Over Knives. And so I came home and decided to watch it. Not the same people. It's not Dr. Furman here. Uh, it's two other physicians, maybe a group of people, and they got together and made this documentary, and it basically makes exactly the same case as Dr. Furman does. A whole plant, fruit, healthy diet, minimize uh, animal proteins. Uh, dairy products are really bad for you. Again, it's not that you can't have meat, that you can't have dairy, but you should minimize it and make it a very small portion of your diet and make... Uh, just lots of good fresh things, the greater proportion of your diet. And uh, the documentary was quite compelling. If you haven't ever watched Forks Over Knives, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Really, you should watch it. Um, so that convicted me right there. And I have lost 16 pounds now, and I have not been counting calories. Uh, you know, I've just cut out the really, really bad stuff and... Eh, for the most part. Uh, I go out every Monday morning and after I work my three weekend night shifts and I have what I call Monday morning meltdown madness at Torchy's Tacos. Yeah, chips and queso, tacos. Um, you know, I have some fun with it, but uh, that's Monday morning madness and it's a lot of fun, you know, and I enjoy it. And uh, next week I'm going to the Riverwalk. If you've ever been to the world famous San Antonio Riverwalk, you know how much fun it is, and no, I do not plan on eating whole plants, fruits, and vegetables while I'm there. At least not all the time. I'm going to bring some with me because I don't want to just gork out for three days and have nothing but fattening stuff and unhealthy stuff. Because honestly, I've gotten to where after about a day or two of it, I'm ready for some fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, my taste buds have reset quite a bit, which I find fascinating. Uh, they, they promised that would happen, and they're absolutely right. I'm finding that I'm enjoying more and more uh, very fresh foods and I uh, don't find that I need uh, saturated fats, processed foods, um, those kind of things nearly as much. Um, anyway, I'm going to share different nutrition tips and ideas from with y'all from time to time as I have learned about it uh, in this book and documentary and I'm also reading various little articles online and uh, for the first time uh, as an RN of 24 years plus I've read something that makes sense. I've watched something that makes sense nutritionally. Quite honestly, the whole food recommendation by the government, I don't really buy into. I think it's, uh, I'm not a conspiracy person. I just think that that's really what they believed was best when it all started. And, you know, and it's just now tradition and it's come forward and, you know, the powers that be that are well entrenched and well seated up there uh, with their lobbyists or whatever aren't, aren't really wanting to change. Uh, there was a little bit of improvement in the mid-2000s when they came up with the My Pyramid program thing, but uh, it was a step in the right direction, but it's not enough. Anyway, so I will let you know about this as time goes on. Um, 16 pounds down. Uh, oh, 
for the first time since I had cancer and chemo in 2008, I went through eight months of chemotherapy. It's the first time I have no swelling on my ankles. It's been six years of huge swollen ankles. Uh, never had it before cancer and chemo, couldn't get rid of it after, and now it's just gone. Uh, that's one of the first big things I've noticed. You know, next is um, obviously the weight loss. You know, that's a big deal. Not really doing it for the weight loss. I'm doing it for uh, inflammation and trying to correct my lab values. You ready? I have cut my pain meds down by 50% or greater. I used to take uh, 75 milligrams of diclofenac twice a day, which is about as high as you can get on that. And I'm down to one time a day of those, and I'm getting to where I can skip one day altogether. So I'm doing six days a week, once a day, and that's a big deal for me. I get a little achy at that point, but I feel like that's a huge improvement. And uh, as I continue to lose weight and get a little bit better at this whole new lifestyle of eating, perhaps it'll get better. So well, there you have it. Now you know. Hey, peace of Christ to y'all, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Eat more vegetables. Vegetables. All fruits. Yeah. And don't skip out on a good steak every once in a while, you know. Yeah.